Let's imagine a situation where we have uh, four chairs and uh, five people which are trying to sit on the chair. So what is the limiting factor here? Everyone will agree that the chairs are the limiting factor because we don't have enough chairs for everyone to sit down. So this similar situation occurs in chemical reactions. Sometimes one of the reagents is more than the other and we don't have enough of one to react completely with the other one. For example, if we are looking at this reaction of the sodium hydroxide with the HCl, if we have, let's say, uh, 5 moles of sodium hydroxide and 10 moles of HCl, then sodium hydroxide is going to be the limiting reactant because we have less of sodium hydroxide than hydrogen. Now, the situation is not as simple for every reaction because sometimes the coefficients are different and it wouldn't matter which one is actually less or which one is more. For example, if you look at this reaction of the hydrogen with oxygen producing water, we actually balance this and imagine a situation like this. What we have, what if we have 6 moles of H2 hydrogen and we have 4 moles of O2. Now oxygen is 4 moles and hydrogen is 6 moles so you would think that maybe then oxygen is going to be the limiting reactant but in fact it turns out that it's not. Oxygen is not the limiting reactant. Why is it like that? We can check in this way. Let's determine how much water will be formed from each of these reagents independently. So if I do the calculation for the hydrogen and I'll keep the color as blue, I can say that the amount of the water that will be produced, moles of the water, is going to be equal to moles of the hydrogen. So we have 6 moles of hydrogen multiplied by the mole ratio every two moles of hydrogen gives us two moles of water so on the bottom i'm going to put two moles of h2 so i can cancel moles of h2 and here i'll put two moles of h2o and it turns out that we're going to get six moles of water from six moles of hydrogen so put the moles on top of each so six moles of hydrogen will give us six moles of Water. Now what about if I check how much water will I get from the oxygen, so the moles of the water that will be formed from the oxygen, and again for the moment we ignore the hydrogen, we can write down that this will be equal to 4 moles of O2 multiplied by the mole ratio. Every 1 mole of oxygen, remember there is 1 here, gives us 2 moles of water. So what we want to do is write down the oxygen on the bottom here so I put my line here we can write down that every one mole of oxygen produces two moles of H2 I can cancel moles of the oxygen and this will give me two eight moles of water four moles of oxygen will produce eight moles of H2 and then I compare so Oxygen gives me 8 moles of H2O and hydrogen gives me 6 moles of H2O. Which one is less? Hydrogen obviously gives me less water, so this is the limiting reactant, which means that hydrogen is limiting the process. It's not really about which of the reactants is in a smaller quantity, it's about which one will give you less product, because this gives us less product. That's why hydrogen is the limiting reactant. So this is similar to a situation with the cars. As an example to understand this, if we want to make a vehicle, what we need is that we need one of these, we need one of the car bodies and we have, we need four wheels. So now imagine a situation. What if I have one car body and I have three wheels? Right, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this and remove one of the wheels because I only have three. Right, so I only have three wheels. So the situation is such that if I now determine how many complete cars I can prepare, I can say that this will allow me to make one because it's enough to make one, but the wheels, wheels do not give me enough because I need four wheels, but I only have three, so wheels are not enough, even though initially three is 
obviously higher than one. We have more wheels than cars, but it's not enough to prepare a vehicle. Another situation, what if I have two car bodies and I have seven wheels? Which one is the limiting factor here? So it turns out that in this situation, what will happen that this will be for one car and then this will be for the other. And if I want to construct the vehicle, what I will have is that uh, the first the first four wheels will go here. This is good enough. Here I don't have one. I need eight, but I only have seven. And so the wheels are not enough again. Uh, then this means that the wheels are the limiting factor again, even though the ratio is pretty pretty big, right? So every we have seven wheels and I only have two bodies, but the seven wheels are limiting this process. So remember, it's not about just to look initially how many moles of each we have, as we had here, and say that this is my limiting reactant. It's about the end product. Which one gives you end product here? Which one is going to give you less vehicles? Which one is going to give you less water molecule? That's how we are going to determine which one is the limiting reactant. Of course, it's possible situations that uh, the one that is in less quantity will be the limiting reactant. Yeah, so, for example, go back to this reaction. So, H2O. Now, if I put 5 moles of hydrogen, 5 moles of hydrogen is going to give me 5 moles of water. And if I put, for example, two moles of oxygen, two moles of oxygen will give me four more of water. So this is based on the mole ratio, right? So every two gives me two, so every five mole will give me five. Every one mole of oxygen gives me two moles of water, so two moles of oxygen will give me four moles of water. So what happens here in this situation is that I have less oxygen, two moles versus five of the hydrogen, and it turns out that this is, in this case, the limiting reactant because it's giving us less product. So there is no direct correlation between the amount of the reactants and which one is going to be the limiting reactant. It depends on the ratio. It's 2 to 1 here. This is for the cars. 1, 2, 3, 4. The, the ratio is 1 to 4. So every time you need to determine which one is going to give you less product independently from the other reactant, and then that's how you know which one is the limiting reactant. If you like this video, you can subscribe to our channel, please. And then you can visit Chemistry Steps for more lectures and practice problems.